video, I'm going to show you how to balance this camera, the Sony NEX FS100, on the Steadicam Merlin. The first thing you've got to do is figure out the centre of gravity of this camera. Now, if you look at the camera this way, it's pretty symmetrical. There's a little bit of extra accessories on this side of the camera, which is going to sort of mean there's slightly more weight on this side of camera. But the centre point is somewhere around about here. So what we need to do first is take our camera plate. Now the camera plate has letters from A through to O written on the plate. So you want the letter H to be sitting over the point where the centre of gravity sits. So what we should do here is mount this either in position H or in position C. I'm going to put it in C because it's actually towards the top end of the camera plate. Next thing to do is to mount this onto the Merlin. So you simply slide this onto here and lock like so. Now what you want to be doing is making sure that your centre point, which is just back here, is slightly behind the gimbal. So the first thing you need to do is put an additional counterweight on this side of the arm so that it balances up the rig. Now I've worked this out already and what you need is a start weight, two mid weights and an end weight and that just pops on to the end of the Merlin. That's giving you a starting point for balancing the camera and as you can see that's not a bad start. What you'll find is you now need to add a nose weight. Now it's very rare, unless you're using a large lens, that you need to use any more than an end weight on the nose. So, what have we got now? We've still got a very top heavy camera. One thing we can do is extend the arm out to bring the weight down. So, we can turn the arm clockwise and we've still got a very back heavy camera. So if we slide this plate forward, what we're trying to do is get a starting balance. Again, still not enough. Wait, let's push that forward. Right. Suddenly, we're in a very good position with very little movement. So, what's happening here, if we look at this side on, is we're listing slightly to this side. So what we need to do is use the trim adjustments just here, underneath here, to adjust that side-to-side -side movement. Now, the thing to bear in mind here is not to go rushing through knurling the switch. You know, small adjustments and then check at the way forward. And this will take a little bit of practice till you get into the swing of it. So that's listing forward and actually not bad for balance from side to side. By only taking quarter turns, if you go too far that one way, all you need to do is come back the opposite way. There we go, I think another quarter turn this way. tiny amounts. Really, really, really small amounts have quite a big impact. So, that's actually relatively well balanced this way. If we do this, you can see it's listing slightly. What that means is potentially the arc is too long. So if we slacken that off just by adjusting these brackets, these little switches here, we can then adjust the arc. If it's too long, we want to bring it up. So we come this way, and we're going to do half a turn. 
a little test is to do this. And if it starts to list, the arc is too long still. So what we need to do, anti-clockwise, another full turn. In doing so, what we've done is we've decreased the size of the arc. We then need to compensate by pushing the camera forward. And what you'll find is, by using the trim functions to tilt down, just come a half turn. And another half turn. Still another quarter turn. The things you want to check for is first of all, back and forward motion. If it's staying relatively level, then that's a good place to be. So we've got our FS100 into a pretty good place, but there's one key thing we've omitted to do, and that is flip up the screen so we can actually see what we're doing. Now it's worth noting at this point that before you balance your camera, you should make sure the battery and media are in and the lens cap is off because any of these extra weights will have an impact on your dynamic balance. So we've lifted up the screen and look what's happened now. The whole thing is listing forward. What we can do is just slide the whole plate back. And that's too much. So what's illustrative here is that you only need to move the camera plate ever so slightly to gain the desired effect. Now by moving the camera plate backwards, we've now balanced the camera for our up and down and left to right. But when I do this, the whole thing starts to pendulum. And that is because we've added this extra dimension to the camera, which means we've actually changed our center of gravity, which means we need to adjust the arc to compensate. If it's penduluming too much, it means the arc is too wide. So finally, a good test is to move the camera up and down, left and right. And of course, don't forget, that operating the Sedecam Marlin is a two-handed operation. You often see people at trade shows doing this and waving it around and going, oh, yeah, that's great. It's a very extreme move. And actually, when you're operating, you've got one finger and thumb touching very lightly the column here, which is adjusting your pan and controlling stability, and your hand is acting like the jib. So the papal cross, as it's known, allows you to just test how well your unit is balanced and that's pretty good.